Growth ETFs are all the rage right now because companies like Nvidia are up 90% just for the year to date. So ETFs that hold large amounts of these big time players are up crazy as well. An ETF like SMH, which is primarily semiconductors, is going nuts with a year to date gain of almost 35% and a one year gain of almost 92%. I actually really like this one as a semiconductor play, but the problem with this ETF though is that it only holds 26 companies and it's very concentrated in just NVIDIA. Yes, that's a good thing now while NVIDIA is going crazy, but it's risky to have such a high percentage of any one company. I don't think the demand for semiconductors is going away anytime soon, and I also don't think that NVIDIA is going to lose its top status anytime soon, but things happen. Humans run this company. Something could happen with the CEO, and the CEO could get canceled, or the company could just have problems, and that's enough for the stock to plummet. And if that stock goes down, the ETF that's holding a large portion of that stock goes down as well. Now, most of you invest in much more broad type growth ETFs, especially those of you that have been following this channel for any period of time. These ones might be ones like SCHG, QQQM, or VUG. This video is gonna be a little bit less broad funds, but more so be similar to ones like VGT, which is a purely technology fund. And most of you know about or invest in VGT, but I'm gonna give you five new ones for you to look at and for you to start your research on because these ones are very interesting. I'm Nolan Govea, my students call me Professor G, and I made this channel to make investing simplified. Now the first one on this list is a very interesting one and it's actually one that got more and more interesting as I dove deeper. Now this one is very much technology centered but it's a little different than a lot of the other ETFs that are very much technology. It doesn't just hold huge numbers of things like Apple and Microsoft. It has a very low reliance on the Magnificent 7 and it does hold some of those companies but what I like most about this ETF is that it doesn't hold any one company as the major influence within that ETF. It's very balanced throughout and it's been absolutely crushing the S&P 500. XNTK is the Spider NYSE Technology ETF. This is composed of 35 leading US listed technology related companies and they're equally weighted as its annual rebalance. The index comprises stocks in the information technology sector and the technology related stocks in the consumer discretionary sector. Now it does have an expense that is somewhat high at 0.35%, but even with that, the gains are insane. On average over the past 10 years, it's brought over 18% appreciation per year, and over the last five years, it's brought almost 22%. The types of companies in this fund are semiconductor companies, software, internet, and then also interactive media and movies. The top holdings are Nvidia, Advanced Micro Devices, Meta, Taiwan Semiconductor, and ASML Holdings. But the thing that is most appealing here is that the fund is very balanced. Even though Nvidia is the highest, it's still only about 4% of the entire portfolio. This is great so that it's not reliant on any one company, and this spreads out your risk very much. It's also mostly companies from the US, but also some from China, Netherlands, Taiwan, and Canada, so you can get a bit of international exposure. The next one I've actually talked about a little while ago, but it's just too sweet to pass up. This one has actually had better performance than VGT in the last five years. XLK is the Technology Select Sector Spider Fund, and this fund is on fire. XLK has appreciated almost 55% in the past year, which is nuts. The Technology Select Sector Index seeks to provide an effective representation of the technology sector of the S&P 500 index. XLK has an expense ratio of only 0.09%, which they brought down from 0.10% recently. It has 64 total holdings and its current price is a bit over $200. The 10 year average appreciation is staggering at 20.67% and the five year is over 25%, which is just crazy. The top holdings in XLK are overwhelmingly Microsoft and Apple, but then also Broadcom, Nvidia, Adobe, Salesforce, and advanced micro devices. The fund is made up of all technology, but huge in software and also very heavy in semiconductors. I do like this one a lot, but it's definitely not balanced like that first one. The next three are even more exciting, and one is even stronger than that SMH one for semiconductors that I talked about at the beginning of this video. But first, I want to introduce today's video sponsor, Moomoo, and explain how you can get 15 free stocks just for 
for getting started with Moomoo. Moomoo is one of my favorite trading platforms. Unlike other apps, you can tap into pro-level tools and information for both beginners and advanced investors absolutely free. I care most about keeping you all safe, so I look deep into the safety of this one. Moomoo Financial is a member of the SIPC, which protects securities customers of its members up to $500,000, including $250,000 for claims for cash. Moomoo also has no hidden fees, no minimum deposit required, or no account management fee. One of the things that really caught my attention about Moomoo and that I think you are gonna love is the impressive 5.1% APY and extra 3% APY for your uninvested cash. So I recommend you use the heat map and heat list to discover potential opportunities. Once you've identified a stock to explore further, you can also check out their stock quote page. You're gonna to wanna to click the link down in my description. You can get up to 15 free stocks by opening an account and depositing funds. I mean, even if you invest somewhere else, 15 free stocks sounds like quite the deal. I didn't believe the numbers of this next ETF until I checked it twice. IYW is the iShares US Technology ETF and it's up already this year alone at over 13%. And over the last full year, it's up over 62%. This one does have a higher expense ratio at 0.40%, but it's been crushing it so it makes up for that fee. It holds mostly software and service companies with some semiconductor and then tech hardware. It is higher in those core companies like Apple and Microsoft, but then also big names like Nvidia, Google, and Broadcom. It has had a very solid 10-year average appreciation at almost 20% per year, and then the five year is almost 26%. These numbers for these funds are starting to sound a little bit redundant and normal, but there's nothing normal about that type of a return. If you were to put just $500 away each month into a fund like IYW that earned almost 26% per year in the last five years, in 10 years, you'd have almost $210,000. In 20 years, in that same fund, with that same return, you'd have $2,235,000. That's just insane off of just $500 per month. Now this next one is very similar to some of the other ones, but I like it because it holds a bit more of Amazon, Tesla, and Eli Lilly in the top 10 than most of the others, and those companies are more in value territory with still lots of room to grow. IWY is the iShares Russell Top 200 Growth ETF. Now I know that I just went over a fund called IYW and now this fund is called IWY. Come on iShares, get a little more creative. You're confusing us. Anyway, this one has had an expense ratio of just 0.20% and has a current price of $194.21. Year to date, it's up 12.5% and over the past full year, up over 52%. IWY holds exposure to large US companies whose earnings are expected to grow at an above average rate relative to the market. Over the past 10 years, it's had an average return of almost 17% per year. And over the last five years, it's returned about 20% on average per year. It holds 110 companies, and as I mentioned earlier, the top companies include Microsoft and Apple, but also Nvidia, Amazon, Meta, Google, Eli Lilly, Broadcom, and Tesla. It is mostly an information technology fund, but also is diversified to hold companies from sectors like consumer discretionary, communication, healthcare, and financials. IWY is one that I'd consider a little bit more of like a broad growth ETF, definitely diversifies that risk, but also has a monster return. This next one is probably the hottest ETF in the semiconductor space that you've never heard about. Everyone talks about SMH and SOXX, but this one is the exact same thing as SOXX, but with half the fee. This is called SOXQ, and this is the Invesco PHLX Semiconductor ETF, and it's only $39 and is up over 24% just so far this year to date, and only has a fee of 0.19%. This one has 30 holdings, but its 10-year average appreciation is super high at over 25% per year, and its 5-year average appreciation is over 30%. That is nuts. Looking at the actual holdings, we have NVIDIA, Advanced Micro Devices, Broadcom, Qualcomm, Intel, and more. All companies you want to be holding in the next 10 years with this big AI and semiconductor boom. And if you do want to go more the semiconductor AI route, I made this video on the three ETFs that you're definitely going to want to check out because this asset class is just going crazier and crazier in 2024 and I see this happening for the foreseeable future.